everyone um, and uh, good afternoon uh, thank you for uh, the moderator and the speaker um, who are with us uh, in the, um, um, on the conference and also for all uh, the attendee that are attending virtual we have a good number of participation uh, we have a two days uh, we will be talking about GI malignancy gastrointestinal master class it's a full two days. Uh, we will be talking in the first day about upper GI and special session and oncology. The second day will be about colorectal and also about HCC. So I would like to thank uh, Dr. Mohamed El Gharni. He is the course uh, director uh, with me. And also our scientific committee, Dr. Mohamed El Gharni, Prof. Gattan, Dr. Fahad Sabatin, and Dr. Kanaan Al Shemmari and also to all the organizing committee and also for our, our uh, moderator and speaker. So uh, this is just to show you uh, the first two days. I'm not going to go to the details. This is the first session and session two and day two about colorectal and its CC. So without any further delay, um, sorry, before that I have to thank our sponsor. Lily Roche, Merck, PMS, and MSD survey, and also a new bridge for their contribution. So I'll ask, I'll ask um, our uh, moderator uh, to start uh, the first session, Dr. Nadal Bukhari and Dr. Al Afaqi. Uh, it will be yours. And welcome to our third session of this gastrointestinal uh, master class. Thanks for the organizing committee for organizing this uh, nice event. Our third session is about gastroesophageal malignancy, and we know we have a lot of uh, advances in uh, uh, these uh, tumor biological, molecular, and immune therapy. Uh, our first presenter uh, will be Dr. Ahmed Hashim, and will uh, present the uh, and then we'll, uh, after that, to help uh, immunity from the new agents in gastro uh, tumor, followed by uh, the role of radiation in the uh, the mic is you. Okay, first of all, I would like all the organizing committee for this nice uh, meeting and I uh, would like to thank uh, uh, the Mr. Chairman and I uh, uh, would thank Mr. Dr. Mohamed Ghani who allowed me to present one of his nice uh, interesting cases. My case will be about gastric cancer. He's a 70 years old uh, gentleman and a small car with multiple comorbid diseases type. One diabetes mellitus, hypertension, dyslipidemia, complicated with the diabetic nephropathy, with no past surgical history and no family history of malignancy of similar condition. His presentation was in uh, July 2019 when he uh, started to complain of abdominal pain associated with melina and significant weight loss about 10 uh, kilo, kilograms in the for three months. Uh, so uh, was admitted in our uh, hospital. Uh, for further investigation and plan of management. Uh, clinically, he was uh, stable with the uh, abdomen soft and legs not tender with systemic examination was unremarkable with good performance status of one. So, uh, investigation for him started with the uh, lab. Uh, rotary finding CBC showed hemoglobin of 8 with a uh, picture of chronic kidney disease. Liver function test was normal. And uh, tumor marker showed CA199 is high to 8,088 we see a normal. So patient underwent uh, upper GI endoscopy and showed large gastric body mass with ulcer and uh, uh, no uh, active bleeding and was looks malignant biopsy was taken from it. CT scan was done for him and showed a uh, focal thickening involved in the greater curvature in the interim, extended for about five centimeters in the length and extended to the perigastric fat and greater momentum uh, with multiple peritoneal and mental deposit, multiple liver lesion, right adrenal lesion with no lymphadenopathy. 
staging workup, the CT brain was normal. CT test showed incidental finding of PE with uh, mild pleural effusion and few uh, uh, lung nodules. Histopathology from the gastric mass biopsy confirmed adenocarcinoma of moderate to poorly differentiated. NGS was requested at that time and later came out with BDL1 2% and HER2 was positive by fish. So diagnosis confirmed as stage 4 and the disregimen also was acceptable safety profile session reba three months of combination with reevaluation CT scan done in February 2019 sorry uh, showed the uh, interval significant re regression of the gastric mass and the significant improvement with uh, to the retinal and liver region. CT test also showed resolution of the pleural effusion and the PE with stable pulmonary nodules. Again, after three months of that, July 2020, showed uh, PET scan confirmed complete response with no hypermetabolic focus, suggests FDG void uh, metabolic active in local or distant metastasis in region. But unfortunately, ECO was done at that time, showed dropping of the ejection fraction from 55 to 45. So, strastuzumab was, was kept on hold for that time and continued the other immunotherapy with chemotherapy. And again, reevaluation PET scan in September showed stable disease with no, no significant metabolic activity. And ECO improved to 50 to 55%. So, trastuzumab was resumed again. And due to impressive response, and patients start to complain of neuropathy, so uh, request to drop the chemotherapy. Chemotherapy, uh, capsitabine, oxalplatine was uh, stopped at that time, and patient continued in pembrolizumab with Herceptin. And clinically, patient was stable, performance zero to one, and treating his immunotherapy with trastuzumab. With re-evaluation PET scan in November 2020 showed same stable with no any active disease. And his tumor marker in December 2020 CA199 so start to increase from the stable as usual from 146 to 4090. At that time PET scan was requested for him but also because of this insurance issue uh, was done in March. 2021 and showed active disease with likely representing a recurrence of the tumor activity in the primary gastric region. A new uh, uh, hypermetabolic like metastatic small or to cable lymph node and also in the liver region. Echo was normal for him, stable with 50%. His laboratory finding with normal and clinically patient was stable with echo zero. So patient was seen after the PET scan uh, as last visit in the uh, 2nd of March and uh, explained to him the, the finding of the PET scan of recurrence of disease and need to resume the chemotherapy. So he start again in capsitabine with oxalpilatin with combination with pembrolizumab and trastuzumab. He received his cycle a few days back and we give him appointment with the next cycle we see his, with him there. With this slide, I will conclude my talk and thank you so much.